Good evening, everyone. Waiting for my brother to come on so that we can talk about resiliency and how important it is to be resilient, especially when having um, set goals. Like right now, I'm practicing resiliency because I have a eight to 10 page paper that's due on Monday and I've been so mentally blocked. So I'm having to activate resiliency to get through this damn block so I can get this paper done. Cause my birthday is on Sunday and I'm not trying to be doing this paper on no Sunday. So, I need this done so I can hand it in before Monday. He don't even know. What is he doing? Big bro. Hey. How are you? I'm good, I'm, you? I'm good. Great. I was telling the people that was on that um we was about to just be talking about resiliency. Yo, this light is hot as hell. Um, for anybody that don't know, this is my older brother. Um, like real live older sibling. Uh he's a correction officer, father of one. Two, three, four, <laughs> four, five. He's the father of like a lot of my nieces and nephews. My niece and nephews. Six? six? You got six kids? <laughs> Come on, no. Nah, we I got we got we got <laughs> you got nah. mad kids, yo. We didn't we didn't we didn't put them on a basketball team, make some money off them. <laughs> yeah, I know he had six kids, but he's the father of six, correction officer. College graduate, huh? I didn't. No, I that wasn't no six kids. <laughs> oh, that's why I'm like, wait a minute, hold up. Yeah, I know you got. I think you got five, right? Damn, nah. Four, four. I said four. Come on, three. man. Stop, stop, stop treating me like I don't know stuff. Nah, anyway, kids. he's a correction officer, father of four, college graduate, um, outstanding man, outstanding person. Um, and when I say father of four, not like. Uh -huh. He has his, he just a father. Like, no, he fought, got custody of his kids. So he's a real live father. So um, he is, he has always been somebody that I model, somebody I always looked up to. Um, I'm proud that he's my sibling. I'm proud that he's a part of, a part of me. Um, I've always said that I am the female version of him because, you know, he's my older brother. He has helped to raise me and teach me the do's and don'ts, always support me through everything, always have my back when, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get my brother on you type shit. He always had my back, never back down. He might yell at me, but never back down, always had my back. So um, I just wanted to come on. First, we were gonna talk about just like sibling life, but I wanted to come on and talk about resiliency because that's something that he taught me. And um, it seemed like we always would go through things at the same time. And he always, he will always be like that motivated and always tell me how to get up, bounce back and get through the shit that we was going through in our lives. 
So, um, Tahin, Big Bro, what you want to say to the people? Um, I hope your live is showing up on your showing up on your page that you live. I'm good. Okay, because I know people were saying that it'll show for a little while and then they stop showing it be live. Because I want your people to know you want too. But what's up? What's up, bro? I told you I had to take that nap, man. <laughs> Old man <laughs> shit, but you know. Yo, naps. I'm up. I'm up, nap I'm up. Be everything, yo. Like real, like I be needing like a 15, 20 minute nap in the middle of the day. I, like I put that, I put a nap in my schedule because yeah, I be needing a nap. I be straight needing that. Just get through the rest of the day. It's like my body be up. You no, know, I get up four thirty every morning, so my body is up, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm at the prison. I'm, you know, walking around, and uh, you know, but I, it's hard for me to like run errands after work. Yeah, hell like, yeah, you up like, mad like, early. I home, take a little power nap and get on, you know, then get on with my business. Mm -hmm. But how are you? I'm straight, man. I got the laptop out when I, I was starting my paper. I got a um, a ten page paper that's due on Monday. So I'm starting it, and when we finish, I'm going to jump back on it. So I'm good. Man, I'm just How many school. pages have you done so far? Say again? I said, how far are you along with the pages? Like, with your assignment? They just gave, how long they gave it to you? You just got it today? No. I got I, I got it when I got the syllabus, like, like, like three weeks ago, like four uh, weeks ago. Nah, but the way my, the way my surprise this, this, this weekend. Nah, actually, nah, usually, you know what? Usually I start. I start my papers a week in advance, but um, this has been a real busy week. This has been a real. I got we got I got discussions. I gotta I gotta um, I gotta do the paper. Um, what else I had to do? My internship. So it was a few things that I had to do that just I just was just managing everything, doing everything. I was getting easy stuff out of the way so that I could just tackle this tonight, tackle it tomorrow night. Sunday I'm not touching it, and it's due Monday. Ah, it'll be all right. It's it's easy. I actually I started the first half of it. Is um I had to interview my aunt Sheena. You know my aunt Sheena. Um, I had to interview her on like the family uh line family timeline. So I did the interview already. So now I've got to put it in the paper. That's easy. I'm about to just sit up here tonight, work on it for a few hours. Sat tomorrow night, and then Monday turn it in. Finish it up, turn it in. So yeah, that's right. that's. that's no, I'm, I'm good on that one. I, I don't do that procrastination shit. I did that the first paper I had to do. I did that shit like two nights before, yo. That shit was so stressful. I was like, nah, yo, I can't do this. I got I to gotta make sure I start my papers at least like at least a week in advance. But that shit be that shit be giving you giving me anxiety when I be doing them papers like that. But um, I right, so resiliency. We're gonna talk about resiliency. So, um. I remember when I, when I when made me think about resiliency was first of all when we was younger, just like anything that I would I would I'll be going through, and I would tell you that I was going through it and I I couldn't get through it. You always always gave me that support. Just like um, I'm trying to think of a situation. We got mad situations like <laughs> mad shit. But no, real quick, I gotta tell everybody this story. So we was like. I was like 13. I was like 12 or 13, right? And we, we had a little, we had like a little mini pool table in our house, in my house. So um, I don't know what's up with his, his shit. You, you there? Your shit, your shit is um circling. Oh, there you go. There you go. All right. So I was saying how when I was like, I want to say I would be like 12 or 13. We had like a little mini pool table in our house, right? Oh God! So, <laughs> we was we was playing pool, right? And <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened, but I hit him in the head with the pool stick, right? <laughs> I was like a little mini bully and shit, right? So I hit him in the head with the pool stick. Yo, he fell out, like literally fell out on the floor. It was laid out on the floor on his stomach, <laughs> and would not get up. He was laid out for like. Like, no bullshit, like 20 or 30 minutes laid out, right? So, <laughs> yo, that shit was funny as hell. So, my mother coming to the room, she like, what's wrong with Taheem? I was like, I think I killed him. <laughs> I think I killed him. <laughs> yo, he was laid there. Yo, he laid there, like, would not move <laughs> for, like, 20 minutes, yo. I was like, oh, my God, I think he dead. I think I killed him. <laughs> I straight hit him right in the head with the pool stick. <laughs> Yo, that shit is a classic story.
Hey, bro. Yo, you know we always, I'm always going on about that one. That shit was so funny. <laughs> Yo, lay out for like 20, 30 minutes. My mother came home like, what's wrong with him? What happened? I was like, I hit him in the head with the pool stick. She's like, oh my God, I, like, I think he's dead. I think he's I think he dead on the floor. That was um, me. That was just me acting silly. You breaking up. <laughs> you said what? I said that was just me acting silly. Yo, that shit was funny as hell. Like, that's a story that would go down forever, yo. Somebody said, oh no. <laughs> that shit's funny as hell. Um, but when I think of what you what you doing? What you moving around, get shit going and keep going in and out. It's like, yeah, I had to, I gotta make a quick start real quick, but I'm here. I'm here. Go ahead. Continue. You got the mic. All right. So when I think of um resiliency in terms of us, it take me back to when you was going through your um your shit with work and I was going through my, my shit with transitioning between jobs. And that that right there, like knowing that, like we didn't even know that we was going through that shit, right? And then knowing that we was going through that, and then um when you when you talking to me about it, I'm like, oh shit, I'm going through X, Y, and Z. And you saying, you know, yeah, but the first thing you said, we're gonna get through this, sis, yo. We're gonna get through this. And I'll never forget that. That that moment just always stuck with me. I'm like, yo, my brother always got my back. Like he always got my he was like, we're gonna get through this, yo. We're gonna get through this, we're gonna be all right. And that shit just always stood out, always stuck out to me. Because you always built that in me, like no matter what, like you always you, you could do it, you go and do it, you going through it even when we was in college together, going going through school together, you always built that resiliency up in, in me. Anything anything I I wanted to do, you always even with you becoming a correction officer, right there. You know what I'm saying? I was there on the weekends. You come home, you know what I'm saying? And, and empowering each other, like just pushing each other, motivating each other. We always was that. Like, like you might you like my twin brother. Like always, we always be going through shit at the same time and shit. Always um, boosting each other up, empowering each other. We're gonna get through shit. So that's why I, I thought about resiliency. I was like, "Yo, we gotta do resiliency because Big Bro always was my motivator. Always let me know that you know what I'm saying I'm here. We here for each other." Yeah, um, I dealt with that at a, in my early adult years, like very early, um, probably ninety ninety eight, ninety nine, and um. I was talking about talking about stress at an early age. Um, I was in school, you know what I mean? I was that first semester I did well, but then you know I started partying, you know, just not taking this shit serious and you know, I ended up getting kicked out. And on top of that, you know, I'm trying to start a family. Well, I had a family trying to do right by it and everything just went wrong for me. Uh lost my car, you know, lost my job. Ended up to be losing my apartment, like I had no end. I thought I was a bum. Like I, I was, nobody was hiring. You know what I mean? Like shit was bad for me, man. And you know, I just had to. How I dealt with adversity, and you know, like shit was real stressful for me being twenty, twenty one years old. And um, you know, I had to. I had to do some self reflecting, man. And I, you know, I, I prayed on it. I, I've, I've had, you know, I went to counseling. And, you know, first step was like, you know what? Let me, let me reach out to my school and see how, like, what can I do? Like, how can I fix this? Like, I'm ready now. I want to get back on task. I want to get back on track. I want to go back to school. You know what I mean? And, you know, I, I, I was granted a meeting with the dean of my, of my major, major of, uh, major of uh, management science and uh you know i had a heart to heart with her to the point where i was i had broke down in front of her you know i mean like i was so you know thing i like shit i went through was so emotional i broke down in front of her and um i had to wait i had to, I had to wait to... Can you hear me you said it went in it went out for a second you said you had to wait how long I had to wait two. I had to wait two weeks for 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 a reply, and she called me to come back in for a second meet, and she told me, you know what, you know, she felt my story, and you know, she she you know she empathized with me, and you know, she's gonna give me another chance. So my like I said, my GPA had went down to a one point six. Sheesh.
you in a bad area. <clears throat> yeah, you 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 going in and out. Ah, right, you back. I'm back. Yeah, you back. So last thing you said was um your GPA had went down to a one point six. Yep. My GPA up to 2.0 in two semesters, and you know that was motivation for me because, like I said, you know I, I knew I could do the work. I, I just had some distractions along, along the way that, that prevented me from handling my business. Mm -hmm. So you know, once I got on board, you know what I mean. I prayed, like I said I prayed on it. You know what I mean. I thought like my my mindset changed. You know what I mean, I thought positive, and I just started. I started putting priorities. I started putting business before pleasure, you know what I mean? Like, I grew up fast, so, you know, I did that. Ended up graduating with a 2.5 GPA. And, uh, you know, like, that was the goal of mine. You know what I mean? Like, you know, then from there, everything else in my life got better. I found, you know, I got got steady employment, got back in my own apartment. You know what I mean, like, I was financially good for a little bit. But, yeah, <laughs> like, I, that was resilient as hell, man. Hell, yeah. Hell yeah, and I remember that. I remember that. I remember yeah, that. You know, I went through that at an early age. Mm -hmm. Early age. And, you know, you got, you know, I just wish, man, like, with people, you know what I mean? Like, you know, just take, life, take life serious, man. For real. For real. And not wait until, you, until you're older when, when it's, like, a little harder. Like, resilience is, the older you get, if you're not used to being resilient, yeah. It's harder. That shit harder. I mean, and like most of the things I go through, and you know, I mean, like I said, nothing's ever gonna be perfect. You are gonna always go through shit, but you know, like now, you know, like me going through that and me being person who I am, that uh, you know, like I, I do with situations better now. Like, like most of my my mishaps are, you know, like <laughs> self inflicted. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Hold on, sis. All right. So anybody that's just coming on, it's me and my older brother. We just on here talking about resiliency. If um <clears throat> if I'm talking about resiliency with anybody, it's gonna be my older brother. He um has been there from day one, you know what I'm saying? High school, grammar school, college, now um graduate school for me. You know, he's you know, long term in his career. Oh God, he lost we lost him now. He got I gotta wait for him to come back on. He must be in like a bad reception area. But um yeah, he he has been uh through the trenches with me. We've been through the trenches with each other. So, you know, that's 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 what you do as siblings, you know. Um and of course as we get older, we don't hang out like we used to when we was younger, you know, when we was younger. But now, you know, it's just that every now and then, sis, you good, or random, sis, I love you. And that's, you know, that's that's what we do as siblings. And, and you know, we fight, but we, not now, but we used to fight, argue. Never had a moment we didn't speak to each other, but fight, argue, all that, you know, typical shit that you go through with your siblings. I was just talking, telling them about us growing up and um and how we've been through the trenches with each other. Because, man, listen, I've been... I, he been through the trenches with me. I'm talking about he was there when I when I when I gave birth at 16 years old, knocked out on the couch and shit. I'm like, I'm like, bro, my mother's like, Tahim, your sister about to have a baby. <laughs> he like, so? And he rolled back over and went to sleep. Hey, like you telling me you telling me for. <laughs> I was like, I was walking past like I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> But nah, man, that's 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 my number. That's this this my number one dude right here, yo. Like he taught me a lot, especially when it comes to um to being a woman. I am, you know. Um, he would always tell me like one another thing that sticks in my head all the time is I remember him saying, "Sis, no matter what, always have pride. Always have pride in yourself. Never never let nobody take you out of your pride." And, and you know, I went through relationships and in relationship that you know 
wasn't real healthy. And he's always just say like, watching you lose your pride. I, I ain't like that. You know what I'm saying? That, that, like this, my brother. So he was, he was always there for me, no matter what I call him, talk to him about shit. You know what I'm saying? He'll he tell me how to get through it, how to improve, how to not, how to not fall. You know what I'm saying? How to not lose myself too. That's something that he always taught me is how to not lose myself. Always be a strong woman. And I always just pride of myself. And we both water signs too. He had cancer. I'm a Pisces. My birthday Sunday. So he always we we understand each other, especially on an emotional level. You know what I'm saying? He always he would never be too hard on me. You know what I'm saying? He never was like too hard. Where it's like he didn't have empathy or compassion for what I was going through. He understood, but he also built me up in the process. You know what I'm saying? Always let me know how much how worthy I was or how good I am or. Yo, you go, you could do that. No matter what, no matter what I tell him, I'm doing. Like even with my bracelets, he won the bracelet. He like, yo, I want to get a bracelet. Now I want no, I don't want no discount, no family discount, no, no brother discount. I want straight up what it costs. Like that's 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 the relationship we have. Like what? always, always support each other. No matter like no matter what, always support each other. That's my that's my big bro, and he taught me. Like he's one of the people that comes to mind when I think about all of the goals I set in my endeavors. He's one of the people in mind that I know will have my back. You know what I'm saying? One of the people that I always think about in terms of I'll be letting him down if I if I didn't accomplish my goals or didn't follow through with my goals or anything that I set out to do. He's somebody that I know. It's like he's like a father figure. You know what I'm saying? My older brother, my, he's like a father figure to me. So a lot of the shit that I that I, I know, it, 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 I was taught through him. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Oh. And, um, and like I said, it was like, like we twins because I swear we always be going through the same shit around the same time. We'll talk to each other and I'll be like, yeah, I was going through X, Y, and Z. He'll be like, yeah, and I'm going through. I'm like, damn, how we going through almost the same shit? Like, the same shit at the same time. And they be coming out of it around the same time. And it's like, once we know that we going through, going through something, he on my jack all the time. Sis, you good? You all right? What, you, you straight over there? Same thing with me. Like when he was going through what he was going through in school, you know what I'm saying, and and, and he decided to, uh, well, he graduated, of course, and he decided to um go into corrections. I was one of his biggest cheerleaders. Like, let's do this, let's get it. You know what I'm saying? And now you what? How many years in you? How many years you got in? Fourteen. Fourteen years in, yo. Fourteen. I'm, I'm so proud of him. So proud of him. Thank you. And I think wasn't was I one of the ones that encouraged you to get your damn to, to get the degree? Cause he finished school and it never never got the damn degree. And I was like, yo, where your degree at? Like I, yeah. I gotta pay. I got I owe them money. I'm like, yo, get that shit, man. Like you worked hard for that shit. Get it. Yeah, they had my shit for like ten years. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, even though you're not in that field, you still worked hard for that shit. Go get it. What are you doing? Where you at? Your, your reception is bad. It's, it's about to get better. I'm about to go in the house. So, um, uh, what else can we what else can we talk about? Apply because we got so much shit like that right there. You with that with in terms of school, how you built your resiliency. What was it like? Oh, he, he, you going in and out again. I can't wait to get his ass in the house. Cause I'm tired of seeing this damn circle on the damn screen. Whoop his ass. Why he gonna wait until he jump on here to, to go run around? But anyway, so um I mean we both we both pretty much been good lately. You know, not really too much that we have to um bounce back off. At this point with both of us, we just improving on our life. Um but I remember that moment. I remember that moment when he when he got accepted into um into the academy to become a, a CEO. And I remember I remember him going through that process, man. Oh my god, I remember him going through that process. And he would only come home on the weekends. I think it was like three months. 
it was like three months long. We would come home on the weekends um, and working. We both used to work like a trillion jobs at the same time. I will, we, we both, like I will be working um, two or three jobs. He'll be working two or three jobs at the same time. Like we always would always just be like matching each other's energy. That's always what we, what we did. Like that, I'm telling you, that's my real loud twin right there. Um, even like, I know if I think I'm doing something that's crazy, I can always bounce off of him and be like, what you think? And he just as crazy as I am. So he's going to be like, now nah, you good. Do it. Do it. If I be like, um, I got two jobs already and, and, and this other job want me to, want me to do X, Y, and Z. The hours is flexible. You think that's too much? Nah, do it. Like he always, he never, he never would shoot down anything that I, um, I set out, set my mind to do, or I said I wanted to do. He never shot it down because we matched each other's energy. We both was always on that on that same wavelength. Like right now, how many jobs you got, bro? Right now, uh, I'm on four payrolls, <laughs> but I work one. Oh, okay. Oh, so you no, know, like you know, I got something to fall back going if need be. Yeah, yeah. He said I'm on four payrolls. I'm working one. A whole bunch of uh. DoorDash type shit, right? Shit, you you can log in when you yeah, want to like, log in. You know, like shit, you, you know, you got a vehicle for like you know, Uber, Lyft, Amazon, Flex. But, you know, overtime at the job, crazy right now. So I ain't working side jobs in almost a year. So yeah, but, COVID, I'm right? Still, the... I'm still on payroll, so I mean, anything you know, I go there right now and get money if I want to. Yeah, but that's where um with the COVID, right? COVID been giving y'all a lot of overtime. Um, that. And uh, no one had that many offices, so we kind of short staff. So okay, yeah. Um, what else? Uh, so what else? What else? You would you say is um, is that you had a you had to apply resiliency in your life? What about fatherhood? Because like I told everybody, you ain't just like get your get your kids on a weekend. People, I know people follow you on here, so they already know your kids like live uh, with you. Yeah, listen, you see my, you go see my, 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 you know, go to my profile, throw all the way back as far as you can, you know, you'll, you'll see the history. You'll see the history. Yeah, he fought, he fought. Look, look. But, next one I, next I, I, no, I don't want to put too much on here. Anything for anybody, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, real, real talk. Neff on here now. Trey, talking some Auntie Bell. What up, nephew? That's him, right? He said yeah. Auntie Aunt Bell. I'm yeah, assuming that's him. That's him, <laughs> What you doing with a fan page? We're going to, we're going to talk. Follow me. Follow, I'm trying to follow you back. But um, what does, what does resilience, how do you teach your kids resiliency? Put it that way. Because I'm always trying to teach my son resiliency. I mean, basically, you know, try not to make the same mistake twice. I mean, like, take that negative turn to a positive. Basically. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like, if you try to overcome bad habits if, if they're already there. But yeah. always like me, you know, like I said, nobody's perfect. You know what I mean, like everybody's gonna make mistakes. Even as an adult, you're gonna make mistakes. But try not to try try like try to repeat from making that mistake again. You know what I'm saying? I try to refrain from that. Mm -hmm. you, you, you change your mindset, man. Just have a positive mindset. Like Yo, that's everything. Yeah. Like your mindset is ev and I'm learning that now. Like we always were doing that as kids, but we didn't realize that that's what we was doing. But that's 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 my whole thing, like, and Either. and also for me, I you know I've always been like a like a solo type person, like just just like my aunt was just getting on me. She was like, "You always like you you always isolate yourself." I'm like, "That's that's just what I do." Like I I don't know, like I, when I, when I know that shit getting you know tight for me, I, I isolate. I don't I don't want to. I don't like bringing if I'm in a down a down mood. I don't like bringing that around other people. I don't, I don't like that. And, and like you said, everything for everybody. I don't be wanting people all in my business. Sure. I'd rather just stay and, and rock with the people I rock with and set, let them know, talk to them. But I don't be wanting to be putting people all in my shit. So I've always been like that to myself type person. And some people look, some people don't like that. Some people look at it as like a, people get mad at it. And I'm, I don't be understanding that. But then sometimes I do, you know, when you, when you, when you got good vibes and you a good person, people want to be around you. And they feel like you, you I mean, even when I'm not, even when I'm not good, I'm good. Yo, I say that shit all the time, yo. Yeah, when I'm not good, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, you know, like, never let nobody see you 
it's that little bite see you in a dark place. And if it becomes that serious, then you, you know you you know who to reach out to. You gotta point people that you reach out to. But I'm not like like it bothers me when people go on social media and just put their business out there. Like you know what I'm saying? Like they go on social media and I'm not feeling well, like like just feeling down and out. And I'm like, yo, like these people don't like you don't even know, like these are people who don't really give a fuck about you. Word. You know what I mean? Word. Like I don't give a fuck about your sob story. Word. They really don't. I mean people, some people are happy that you're going through that yeah. shit. They see that, they smile, like they, you know, of course they're gonna type some oh keep your head up, but you know, some people secretly deep down the side be like praying for your downfall, you know what I mean? Word up. Yeah. And you always posting that shit. Yo, you oh, yo, your post be having me cracking. Like, yo, you would never up. see me posting no negative shit, like personal shit I'm going through. Never. You be posting funny ass stories. Like I said, yeah, you're, it, yo, you're real live going and start talking it, some story. But to me, I, I look at social media as an entertainment outlet, man. You know what I mean? Kill the day. You know what I mean? I, you know, talk, you know, just up there just chopping about. I'm never going up there in the stupor. You know what I mean? Word. Like, y'all never that's where I learned that from. Like, but that's like, where I learned that from from you. Like, you, you always said, you always said that shit. Yeah. And you and you always said that shit to me, like never let nobody see you sweat. Never let like I learned that from you, like never let nobody see you sweat. Never, never let nobody let, let nobody know that you in that you in a down moment. You always told me that shit, always. Yeah. And I and like I live by that, like real, like I live by that. And to the point where like even if I'm not in a down place, I just like to be by myself. But you already know, peace of mind. Uh, I know I've, I've been seeing you about peace of mind. <laughs> I nicknamed myself the Lone Ranger. I mean, <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo, this dude be on a flight by himself, going everywhere. By I'm like, bro, where you going now? He be out by himself, going everywhere. He said, I nicknamed myself the Lone Ranger. All right, All right. I've been doing it. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm by myself for self. So I mean, people be procrastinating, bullshitting. Listen, I'm out anyway. I mean, I hate, yeah. I hate, time, I hate, time waits for no man. Like, hey, I ain't, can't have nobody holding me back or holding me up. If I, say, like, I, I try to, I try to honor my word. If, if I say I'm going to do something, best believe, 90, 98% of the time, it's going to get done. Yeah, word. With, with, never... with, with, with or without, with or without you. Real with, talk, yo. Oh. And one thing I could say is you have never, me being your little sister, you have never let me down. Never let me down. Never. Like, you, <laughs> you yeah, be coming uh, hard. Yeah, yeah, was, uh, you worked for Domino's, right? Back in like 96, not, not, like 97. And I, I, I came back from a delivery. No, no, not that. Well, yeah, that one too. It's another story. But yeah, I'm, I'm continuing with that one. And you crying and shit. I'm like, what the fuck going on? I'm like, I'm like, yo, I'm like, Looking around, I'm spazzing on Kenny and then like, the fuck, why the fuck you crying? <laughs> like, I don't remember like, that. Man, you remember that shit? You was crying. Like, you thought I was emotional, man. Like, you, you ain't like, you was young and you ain't get your way. You start crying and shit. Or somebody, you know, you're sensitive as Pisces. Somebody say something to you. You start crying and shit. Like, yo. What the <laughs> and I'm like. Uh, keep, wait, wait. To everybody watching, I used to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> yo, hold on. Remember that time you was living on Shepard, right? You called me up like, uh, these, like these dudes call me a bitch. Like, so now I can't. Me being who I am and being prideful, I'm like, all right, fuck it. She need me. I gotta go over there. Like, I don't know what I'm getting myself into. I'm walking into some blind shit. I just hope I somebody get over there. This shit, this shit is squashed. I'm like, come on, man. Yeah, I almost got you killed like a thousand times. <laughs> He's like, oh my God, this girl in her fucking mouth. Like this girl in her fucking mouth. I'm like, my brother there. on you. Get I'm my coming brother. over there blind to the fella. Oh, I don't know. I don't know these niggas. They, they could be strapped like, strapped like, come on, man. <laughs> like, stop putting me yo, in harm's way. But let me tell y'all, my brother was always a G, yo. Always, even in high school. Even in high school, like he was always a G with it. Like never, ever like, Nah, since he's like, where they at? Who is it? I'm coming. Like then, then get later on yelling like, 
yo, man, you and your fucking mouth, you're going to get me killed one day. <laughs> you're going to get me killed. But wait, why was I crying at Domino's? I don't remember that. Somebody, 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 somebody said something you ain't like. I guess they hurt your feelings. <laughs> I'm like, oh, boy. Come on, man. <laughs> yo, that's funny as hell. Those, those memories right there be having me dying, yo. But you, but, but on another note, you was always my going out partner. We always, yo, we used to be going out like crazy, yo. Where you going? Where you going to speak and sis? Going such and such. I am there. Let's go. Where you going to speak and bro? Going such and such. You coming? I'm there. I'm coming. Yo, we was, we was going out partners for like, for, for a minute, like the early 2000s. Yeah. Going out all the time, hella pictures and shit. Got the memories up here to show it. Yeah, yeah. Word up, yo. yo we gotta get a picture on Sunday. I, I picture oh, yeah, yeah. all the time, That's all the time. Cool. Every That's birthday. That's my. This is my dude, right? It's my right hand. It's my twin brother, right here, yo. Like nice. real life, big bro. Super fast. Um, but nah, but it's always good to have. A sibling, you know what I'm saying? It's always good to have an older sibling, especially for me. I love the fact that I had a big brother because I feel like a lot of the ways in me, a lot of my ways, I always said he taught me how to be a dude. And, and, and I don't know another way to say it. He taught me, like, a, a lot of my mindset was balanced in terms of thinking like a woman and thinking like a man because of the, of the knowledge that my brother instilled in me. He always taught me, like, how a dude thinks, how a man thinks. I remember you telling me this. I don't know if you remember this, but you always told me that being, that if, some, if a man calls me sexy, that's not a compliment. That's a that's like him referring to me in a sexual way. You always that's, taught me that, yo. Yeah, that's, it's not a compliment. I mean, I, I mean, I'm looking at you with hung like with lust in his eyes, hunger in his eyes. And I used to always tell tell dudes like you sexy, I'm like that's not a compliment. Come better. Like I used to be hard as hell on dudes because my brother taught me. He taught me in how a man thinks. And I thank him for that because it got me through a lot. Like it it it, it helped me to um to recognize certain things that was come certain guys and how they was coming for me or coming my way and like a nah I'm good or or I, you know, he might be on to something. But my brother always taught me how to think like a man. Act like a woman, think like a man, have pride, always stay above the rest. Um, don't depend on nobody for nothing. What else? Um, resiliency, like I, like like the whole topic, resiliency, how to bounce back, um, especially when it came to relationships. Because, of course, who, who am I going to talk to about relationships but my brother? So when it came to relationships, he always, he would tell me, and, yo, I would be the one, like, damn, like, I'm going to give him a chance. He's like, nah, cut him off. And then if, and if I call him again about, about somebody, why are we still talking about this dude? I told you cut him off. I was like, damn, okay. Like that's that's and and I thank him for that, yo. Like he made me, he helped to make me the strong woman I am. On top of him, my mother, my dad, he helped to make me the strong woman that I am. So he's always my first go-to when it comes to a man. Like whenever I want to come for a man's advice, it's him and my father first go-tos. And I thank you for that, bro. I give you your flowers. If I have flowers right here, I hand them to you. <laughs> Can we step aside some flowers, man? What's wrong with flowers? Ain't nothing wrong with flowers. I ain't gonna take care of them flowers. <laughs> All you gotta do is put water in them, sit them there, and they and, and they and they and they just take care of themselves, and then and then two weeks they die. <laughs> That's all they do. I buy myself flowers every two weeks. So and I know they're gonna die. I ain't trying to take care. I just put water in them, and I fill it up, and it two weeks that water's going. I know you. How you water these flowers? I'm just clowning with you. I appreciate it though. You I said what? I you said, you're not explaining to me how to wear the flowers. I'm just, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> nah, but, um, yo, I'm looking forward to Sunday, though. We're going we gonna, to we gonna, we gonna turn up, yo. We're going to have fun. We're going to have fun. We're going, we going out for my birthday. This is what we do. Um, we're going to turn up. I'm, I might dance a little bit. I might dance a little bit if it's music. I think it's going to be music. I don't, know, I don't even know what, like, I don't know what's, is this like a party type of thing? I don't even know what, I just know it's comedy. And we're going we gonna to have a ball. Yo, so last time I went to a comedy show, right? Now, at this time, I was competing as a bodybuilder. So I'm all, like, cut up, muscled up. He, like, we're going to sit in the front. I'm like, come on, bro. They going to kill me in the front at this fucking comedy show, yo. Like, you going to be good? That's what they do. It's comedy. That's a, that, it's all jokes. It's all fun. 
it's all fun when it's not on you. I already know, like, everybody that hit that stage going to get on me. Sure enough. But it wasn't bad. They, they, they didn't get on me bad. But every comic that got on that stage had something to say about me. But you remember that one dude that he, was just, he just kept going on about how much I bench. And, and, and I'm like, yo, <laughs> move on, yo. Go, go on to the next joke. Like, what are you doing right the one, now? This is um, the one they had at Bogies like five years ago, right? The one they had at Bogies. Yeah. And they actually yeah. said that dude, they couldn't do another comedy show because he, the way he was talking. Like, he wasn't talking breakfast, but he was talking about, like, sex and all that. And you remember that was like a, like a, like a, remember the mayor was there? The May Starnes was there? Oh, we all adults. Like, it's kind of, I, I, I just, the opportunities that make people laugh. Like, but yo, you all the dope, you know, kids. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm telling him, like, bro, they they gonna they gonna murder me. They gonna they. I know I'm gonna be the brink of everybody's joke when they hit that stage, yo. And he like, nah, we be. It's all good. It's all good. It's all fun. We gonna just laugh. I'm like, yeah, it's all fun because everybody be talking about your ass. <laughs> but um, but nah, we ain't gonna we ain't gonna, I ain't gonna hold jokes. I gotta get, I gotta get back to this paper. I just wanted to chop it up with you. You know, I had to get you on here. Um, I'm tr I'm doing these every week, just a 20, 30 minute conversation about something and you talk about whatever it is that, you know what I'm saying, you want to highlight to the world because somebody out there need to hear that, you know what I'm saying, how you came from the bottom and worked your way up and use resiliency in your favor and keeping a positive mindset because that's definitely, yo, in these days you got to maintain a positive mindset. You have to, like, like you said, and that's crazy you say that. I don't know if I got that from you or what, but I always say, even when I'm not good, I'm good. Like, that's my shit. When I'm, people are like, how you good? How you doing? I'm like, I'm straight. And even if I'm not straight, I'm still going to be straight. And my mom used to, like, she used to always tell me, like, if you keep thinking fucked up things, then fucked up things going to keep happening to you. So Manifestation. You, man, you, you, you create it. I tell people that shit all the time. Like, like you, people, you, have the, you have the power to create your reality. It's simple as that. It's like you said, when you you um you got kicked out of school, you figured something got to give. And what you do, you got up, you made a phone call, and you created that reality of you getting back into school. And they held you to a certain standard, and you main you you figured you got to that standard, you maintained it, and you you got through. You finished school. Yeah. So we all we all got the power to create what we want to create. It's just all on us. Like you said, you keep thinking fucked up things, what you expect. So that's 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 the path that you create for yourself. You design your own life. Hell yeah! What you make it, man. Hell yeah! I'm a strong believer of that shit. It's on. It's it's all on you. People, I, I be I can't I can't stand what was me type people, yo. That shit. Oh my god! I did a video on Instagram, I posted up, and I, it's the hopeless versus the knowers. I can't stand people with that. I only want to be around negative thing of people, man. Like yo, like. Get away from me with that negative energy, man. Yo, for I gotta, real. I don't like hearing that shit, yo. For real. Like, for why real. Why you always angry? Like, why are you always mad? What's your life like? Like, come on, man. Mad. I don't like hearing that shit all the time, man. <laughs> and then, and, and people with the, I hope this happens. I hope, I hope, I'm like, damn, what the fuck you want to know that shit going to happen? Like, we going to make that shit happen. Like, I can't stand that. Like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't use the word try. I don't use the word can't. Those two words I don't say because I'm not trying to do nothing. I'm either doing it or I'm not doing it. Ain't no try. Like, people say I'm trying. I'm like, how are you trying? Are you doing it or are you not doing it? I don't know what trying means. So I don't use the word try and I damn sure don't use the word can't. I, I say I'll replace it with I'm working on it. I'm in the process. I'm building. I'm making it happen. I'm, I'm, I'm slowly making progress, but trying. <laughs> It ain't no such thing as trying. Like, like, how do you try to do something? You either doing it or you don't. Think about that. So yeah, people, you know, people just don't. People don't have that resiliency. People, I, I, I talk about resiliency at my internship. I, um, I run groups at the, uh, at the, the play, the treatment facility that, I, that I'm at for my internship. And um, one of the groups I, I facilitate is smoking cessation, where they gotta stop smoking. So I'm like. <clears throat> I never smoked no damn cigarettes. Like, how am I going to teach this group? So I'm, I'm sitting home just thinking, like, how the hell am I going to teach this group and make it interesting? I was like, you know what? I'm going to apply life skills to this group. So I started off with goals, setting goals. 
because they can now apply that to setting the goal of stop smoking, right? So one of the cl one of the, the groups I ran was was resilience, and I was telling them like, all right, it was a black chair. That I was like, so this black chair it gets right here in, in front of me. That's a that's a resilient that's a, that's resiliency that's stopping me from going forward. But you have right, you have left, you even got behind you. Sometimes you got to move backwards, go around whatever's blocking you to keep going on that path. Yeah. People feel like, I don't want to go backwards. Sometimes you got to take a, a couple steps backwards so you can go around whatever's blocking you. But people see that, that, that chair and they stop there and they stuck. They don't know how to get around blockages. And that shit, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, my brain's not wired like that. Like when I, when I set a goal, I see, I got a tunnel, like a tunnel that I'm in and ain't there's getting in the way. I'm getting, the, I'm, I'm, I'm knocking that shit down or I'm getting around it. Either way, I'm going to still go wherever my goal is headed towards. So I never really understood that, but the ladies, they, they loved it. It was like, you know, I never thought of that. I was like, yeah, sometimes you got to take a couple steps backwards in order to keep going on the path that you was on. Step back, go to the right, go to the left, go around and, and get back on that path. But don't let one little wall, one little blockage stop you. Just like we're working out, we both in the gym. You have to you have to break that wall of, of comfort in order for your muscles to continue to grow. If you don't break down that wall of comfort, so if you're used to doing 25 and you feel you feel good at 25, then you need to go 30 reps where it's now burning because now you're breaking that wall and now your muscles going to grow. You you building your confidence in yourself because now you can see like oh shit I've been thinking that I can only do um I can only do two twenty five. Throw another quarter on there, and and now do just do two or three reps with that with that added quarter. Now you you built the the, the um the confidence in yourself. Now once you see that you can do it, you want to keep setting goals and keep doing more because you that that adrenaline rush that 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 oh shit I could do it. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's another part of resiliency. Staying staying at one place and just and staying stagnant. That's that's resil that's being resilient. That, I mean, that's, that's a blockage, and you have to build resiliency to grow past that. A lot of people don't do that shit. People be scared. Like, people be scared to grow. People be scared to grow. And I never really, I never really understood that. That's not me. I'm all, I get bored fast. I get bored, and I, I know you do. I get bored fast. Like, I get bored with some shit fast. If I ain't being challenged, or if some shit ain't, ain't if, if I ain't going to the next level with some shit, I, I get bored. I'm like that with the same routine shit all the time. Yeah, you know that, that shit. That shit's boring. Like, it's it, I'm always trying. I'm always trying to improve on something myself, mainly myself. Especially at our age now, we always trying to improve on ourselves. When we was younger, we probably was trying to improve on certain little things. But now, I'm always trying to improve on myself. I'm always asking myself, like, I right, how can you grow? How can you get better? What can you do to get better? And that's always like a goal that you gotta you gotta try to work on maintaining. Always try to improve on yourself. You should never start trying to better yourself. But a lot of people are scared to work on themselves. Working on yourself, it, it can be scary, and people are people really be scared to face themselves. A lot of people can't look in the mirror and tell themselves they love you. They love themselves. They can't look at themselves in the mirror and say, "I love you." That when I was teaching, um, a group of women came into the school and was talking to the girls, and they gave all the girls a mirror, and they told them like, "Don't turn it over." So when they finally had them turn it over, they told them, "When you, when you turn this mirror over, just look at yourself in the mirror." And so, well, of course, at that age, I was teaching eighth grade. A lot of them couldn't do it. They could not look at themselves in the mirror. And I'm, and me being a teacher, I was like, damn, I never did. I never actually like sat there and stared at myself in the mirror. And I went home and started doing that shit. Now I get up in the morning. First thing I do when I get up in the morning, when I get out of my bed, I walk to my mirror and I'll say like, I love you, queen. I love you, girl. Like you got this shit. Like, like we about to go conquer this fucking day. Like I look myself in the eyes in the mirror. If you can't look at yourself in the mirror, you gotta then then something ain't right inside. You gotta work on yourself. You gotta you gotta if you can't tell yourself if you can't love yourself or tell yourself you love you, how the hell you expect other people to love you? You can't expect love from other people. You gotta you gotta bring in love from yourself. And like you said, you create your reality. You tell yourself you love you love you love yourself, you create the love for yourself, then everybody around you will have no choice but to love you because they see how you love on yourself. And that's just what that is. That's the move. So, all right, I'm getting back to my paper. And um, what you over there doing? What you watching? I'm just turning channels. I just woke up. I'm just turning channels. 
Another thing that my, my brother could do, is I could FaceTime them, right? And I wish you doing sitting here, what, sitting here listening to music. And I'm like, it's like you're not watching videos or nothing. No, nah, I'm just, he just be sitting just like that in <laughs> music. He just be sitting there listening to me. I'm like, so you just sitting there like looking at the walls of the music? Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to try that shit. All right, well, no, nah, like the TV is on mute. Like as if you're in like a lounge or something. The TV is on, you can't hear it. So I'm just. Oh, like, you have no mute. Yeah, and I got my radio. I got my music playing, vibing, enjoying some me time. But you taught me that. I don't yeah. know if you you taught me that shit. One day I caught I Facetime and you said you was doing. It. I was like, right, I ain't gonna fuck up your flow. And then I um I said I'm gonna try that shit, yo. And I just turned on music one day and I was like sitting. Matter of fact, I had COVID, so I'm, I'm in the house. I ain't had no choice. I'm in the house and I ain't like watching TV. I let the music play, and I was just sitting there, like, looking out my window, listening to music. I was like, yo, this shit's like meditation. Exactly. Like, it's therapeutic. It was therapeutic. Okay. Like, it was therapeutic. Hey, TV and music, like, you know, TV or radio, I'm listening to the radio. I'm listening to music. Yeah. And, like, even when I do my I papers, I have music playing. I only, like, I watch TV, but not, I, I'm not in front of the TV all day. I'm not one. Nah, that, nah. Nah. My music, I still buy my books, I read, you know. What, I mean? what you reading now? Uh, Lux 2 by uh, Ashley Antoinette. I don't know what that is. It's, it's, I don't She did the cartels. The cartels. Uh, yeah, her, her, her husband. I haven't read them type of books in so long. I love. Nah, I, I, I read, I've been reading more like, like spiritual books. Like, um, I'm reading now this book called the power of the power of intention so like, I mean, like setting, even, yeah but it's not even a her book you know what i mean it's, what is it it's still, it's, it's, it's still uh it's, it's fiction but it's not you know they ain't talking about somebody 19 years old out here making millions or you know it's it's about a it's about a, a woman that grew up or a girl that grew up in uh flint michigan and you know, straight A's and B's. You know, I mean, had you know had a troubled family life. Then she ended up going to college in L.A. She went to UCLA, and you know that L.A. fast lifestyle. You know, you caught up in the mix, and uh, she just she went from being being a being an angel, like being a, you know being being on her shit, you know, getting good grades, and and just faltered. Like, got on drugs, got dig the heroin real bad. Oh damn! Yeah. That sounds good. But well, you got some. You got, so, what's, so, what's right now, so right now, she's dealing with resilience. Right now, you know what I mean? Word. Yeah. What's the, what's the name of it? Does it's somebody called, say what's the name of the book again? What's the name of it? It's called Lux L U X E two. But there's a part one and part two by uh, Ashley Antoinette. It's called Lux L U X E. All right, I'm gonna look they it got, up. They got it at Barnes and Noble. I'm gonna look it up because you know what I've been reading more of. Well, what, what I've been reading in terms of fiction, James Patterson, them fucking mystery books, yeah. yo. Them shits be good. I started getting in those, but I'm gonna look that up because I haven't read a book like that in a long time. Yes. But I definitely, in the midst of my schoolwork, I always try to read something for myself, whether it's fiction, or whether it's it's spiritual, just empower myself. I'm like I was reading um, um before this, I was reading um the Hugh, the the Huey P Newton book about the 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 movements back in the day. Like, I did that shit be interesting. So I've just been, like, just trying to stay on top of um, different books that, that just for me, outside of social work stuff. I'm like, all right, because, you know, that shit could become, you could burn out from just reading all that kind of stuff. So I read that. I just find a balance. I try to find a, 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 a good balance in my life to, yeah. with, um, in terms of me. But I got to do more of my social life. I know you were getting on me the other day about my social life. I got to I gotta do more for my social I, life. Balance, man. balance, man. Work hard, play hard. Got some body. Work, yo, for real. Yeah. For real, for real. Um, but all right, let me get off this. I'm about to finish this paper so that Sunday I ain't gotta worry about this shit. We could just turn all the way up. And um I love you, bro. Love oh, you too. And um and if I don't talk to you tomorrow, well I gotta pop up tomorrow and this paper and shit. So I'll be seeing you on I'll Sunday. Night. Do what? I so said I'm hanging out in Philly tomorrow night. Damn, well, Philly, you always somewhere. I'm chilling, man. You need to take a little road trip. <laughs> yo, you. I'm chilling. Yo, this dude is always somewhere. But I'm always gonna, somewhere. Come back Sunday, and Sunday, you know, we going to turn up. Oh, we turn uh, up. We, oh, we turn up. Get that done, paper done.
I love you too. Thank you, bro. Darling. All right.